Our big question now is how to describe the forces that change the angular acceleration of a rotating object. We spent quite a bit of time talking about how applying a force to an object would cause the object to move in some way. Now we need to apply that idea to objects that move in a circular motion. We call this specific action a torque, and it is the rotational equivalent to a force. When a torque is applied, an object will begin to rotate or stop rotating. If you take the door, you can see that it is attached to the wall, and when a force is applied, it moves in rotational motion around the attachment point, which we call an axis of rotation. Now the diagram shows a force being applied at a specific location along the door at some distance r from the axis of rotation. Keep in mind that this force can be applied at any point along that door. You probably have some idea that the closer the force is applied to the axis of rotation, the more force must be applied. This is actually our definition of torque, the radius multiplied by the force exerted and it has the label of newton meters. If our force is applied perpendicular to the rotating object, we don't have much to worry about. But as you can imagine, that doesn't happen every time, so we have to take that into account the fact that forces can be applied over other angles. Now if you have ever opened a door, you probably know it is most efficient to apply the force perpendicular to the door. This is what the sine theta is telling us. Sine of 90 degrees is 1, so that gives us a maximum torque on the door. If you come in at an angle, the sine of that angle is always less than 1, which means you have to apply more force to get the same amount of torque. Since torque is a vector quantity, it can work in more than one direction. Now if we are pivoting around some axis of rotation, there really is only two options here. In the first diagram, the force is applied that is acting to increase the angle theta. This produces a counterclockwise motion. In the second diagram, the force is being applied in the opposite direction, causing the angle to decrease. Now if we look at the situation where a force is being applied along the same axis as the radius, what do you think will happen to the door? What if you go in the exact opposite direction? The problem here is the door will not move. The sine of 180 degrees is zero, so applying a force directly towards the axis of rotation will get you nowhere. Of course, sometimes we don't have the perfectly straight object when we are rotating. The axis of rotation could be offset, or the force could be offset. Either way, the force being applied can produce a torque, but it depends on the location of the pivot point in relation to the force. We can diagram a triangle between those two vectors, with the angle theta being the angle between the force and the radius. The component of the vector perpendicular to the force is equal to r sine theta. This is called the perpendicular lever arm, or the moment arm, and can be written as a torque equal to the force times the perpendicular radius. So the moment arm is the distance out from the line of force. So if we apply a positive force, then the torque is greater than zero. This means that the angular acceleration is greater than zero and the direction of the rotation will be counterclockwise. If we apply a negative force, then the torque is less than zero. This means that the angular acceleration is less than zero and the direction of the rotation will be clockwise. Say you exert a perpendicular 50 newton force on the edge of a 1.0 meter door. What torque do you apply? This one is pretty straightforward in that we are given the length of the door, which is our lever arm. We also know the force that is applied, so it is just a matter of plugging in our knowns and finding 50 newton meters of torque. But what if we don't apply the force to the edge of the door? What if we apply a force a quarter meter from the edge? This makes our lever arm a length of 0.75 meters instead of a full meter. This changes our torque to 38 newton meters. This tells us that you can achieve more torque just by increasing the lever arm. Now what if you apply your force at a 60 degree angle at the edge instead of a 90 degree angle? Here you are only applying some component of your force perpendicular to the lever arm. So only 43 newton meters will be translated into torque. So torque is some force applied some distance from the pivot point of a rotating object which is how you find it. You take that force and you multiply it by the radius. It is measured in newton meters. And if you apply that force perpendicular, you don't have to do anything else. If your force is not perpendicular, you need to take that into account. 